Hello friends, welcome to my final video still on the various methods through which heat can be delivered to a rocket motor. In this project, I'm gonna show you how to transform the control and receiver board of a quadcopter to a wireless launch controller that could enable you to reach over a 400 meter distance. With this, you have overcome safety and the hustle of carrying extra items such as the long cable and a heavy gel cell battery. The flight board and the control are from a Simon X8 quadcopter that was having connectivity issue when it's flying. Now let's begin by detaching the thin wires from the brass motor positions, replacing them with the thicker ones. Remember there are four motors here, which means we can launch four vehicles simultaneously from each paired cable. We are going to have to change the power button to that of a toggle switch, which is what I am doing here. Now, well, since the receiver board won't be sitting in a quad anymore, I thought of a 7.2 inch PVC cylinder shaped pipe to do the job. Since I won't be launching that many vehicles simultaneously, I'm running a paired wire from one of the brush motor connectors of the receiver board to create another circuit connector at the base of the cylinder PVC. Now if you recall, this is the kind connector used in the making of the wired launch controller device in episode 10 and I'm going to use it to do the same purpose here. The only difference is it's approximate distance to me, the controller almost about 400 meters wide and 61 feet from the vehicle itself as you may see in an animation towards the end of the video. Now to obtain that approximate long distance, some form of antenna modification has to be done. So I'm removing the one from a wireless router and replacing it with a pigtail antenna that the controller originally came with. Now let's go ahead and install the antenna from the wireless router to the transmitter for link extension. We have arrived at the end of the making of the wireless launch control system, but before deployment, here are the sequence of events you need to go through. The transmitter light pole battery and the antenna must be installed first. Note, you must not power the receiver if the antenna isn't installed, you will risk damaging the onboard components. You then, you then proceed to install the four medium-sized alkali batteries in the transmitter. The first device to turn on is the transmitter with the control stick in a downward position, then the receiver. You will notice rapid beats from the receiver before connecting to the transmitter. And as soon as the handshake is established, the long beep will proceed. The vehicle is now armed. You have to push the control switch forward to initiate firing. You will notice after ignition, the receiver continues to beep. This shouldn't happen and has to be resolved later. The animation here shows how signal from the transmitter reaches the antenna of the receiver at the launch site. The signal hits the antenna in a form of AC voltage which then gets converted to DC thereby hitting the bridge wire for ignition to start. You also have the added advantage of taking close proximity videos at the launch pad with the camera on the receiver which also had an SD card for the storage of the video footage. 
You are here the limited remote testing of the controller and it seems to be working just great. Thanks for watching, until next time.